Hey guys, welcome back. I'm so happy because I'm here with one of my best, closest, closest, oldest friends, Bailey. Hello, thank you for having me. Thanks so much for being here. So Bailey is actually not Jewish and she's gonna be on this show today talking about her experience becoming religious as a Christian. Yes. And that's amazing because some diversity, it's just interesting. And it totally falls in line to the theme of this show, which is exploring how faith influences our life and how we can take away from the Torah, from our faith, practical applications for our life in everyday settings. So there's a lot to glean from Bailey's story, and she's just such an interesting and amazing person. So I think you're going to love her. So let's jump in. Bailey, tell us a little bit about yourself and your story, but not just like your story from who you were like mm -hmm. years ago. Yeah. So I was basically born and raised on Long Island. We were friends like throughout middle school and high school and even into college. And I did not have a close relationship with God. I was like a bit of a party girl, like mm -hmm. no direction really, like just kind of following the crowd and like what I saw around me. Mm -hmm. But I always had like a spiritual hunger for God and just like having a relationship with him, I'd say. But did I was pray growing up. I did a little bit. Yeah, like I remember like praying sometimes like before we ate and like my dad would read the Bible with us, but I didn't go to church regularly. And like it wasn't an every day or even like an every week subject at my house. And yeah, so, so basically I, God's here, but it's not right. Like I knew a little bit about God, but did not have a close relationship with him. And yeah, went to college and like drank a lot like most kids. And then, you know, came back home, started working after graduation. I'm still at that job and I'm still like very passionate about what I do. And, you know, unfortunately, a few years after I started my job, then my dad suddenly passed away mm -hmm. and he was a big believer in God, mm -hmm. like when he was younger and he once served on the board of a church and he had even gone to this church that I currently go to with me a few wow. times, like before he passed, like he gave his like approval on it. Wow. And like, we were just starting that relationship so you're that, kind of continuing it exactly so now beautiful. yeah i still get to go and um now i've been you know a believer in god for a year and you know i think of him every day i pray every day i read the bible every day i serve my church um i give to the church so it's just a whole different mentality and god has given me so much peace in my every day and direction and clarity and confidence in who i am he made me who i always wanted to be Oh my gosh, health. I love yeah, that line. So, yeah. He made me who I always yes. wanted to be. Can you like talk about how or what that means specifically? Yeah, he just filled in the gaps of my heart that were missing that the world could not fill in. And I feel like when you're younger, you always have like a vision of yourself, like yes. who you want to be, yes. like career wise and like just how you treat people. And he made that possible. How did you envision want, who did who you wanted to be? I just wanted to be like a good person, like someone that is giving and generous and like hardworking and kind. And you can't, in my opinion, you can't do all that if like you're drinking and you don't have direction and stuff like that. And like God just really molded me into that person. Wow. I feel the, yeah, it was yeah. so similar for me when I like found... Torah and mitzvot and people look at it and think, oh, there's so many rules in mm. Judaism. But to me, it's like, it's structure. if you didn't have that structure, mm -hmm. then how, it's not enough just vaguely and ambiguously say you're a good person. Right. I like clearly defined, what does it mean to be a good person? What do I have to do to be a good person? Yes. Tell me the steps. Absolutely. And there's like prescriptions for every little detail. Mm -hmm. And it's a beautiful thing that God cares so much about the minutia of our lives. Yes. That, um, so yeah. And I it's totally timeless. Agree. Yeah, it's that timeless. structure is timeless and it'll be there for like your children, your children's children. Like right. to have that guideline is so beautiful. My pastor once said, if God is not your God, then something else is. Ooh. And that definitely resonated with me. I love that. Yeah. And I feel like for me personally, like my friends or like fun events, like that was my God, like that was my everything. And now that I have God, it doesn't matter like who I'm with or what I'm doing because he comes first. And then, oh my you God. know, whatever comes after, like that's part of his plan. But I have the actual chills. Yeah. It's so beautiful. 
I'm talking, I'm serious. Like God just transcends all religion. Yes. We are from different faiths. And when you talk about God, I get the chills. I yeah. literally get the chills. Like, because it's just so true. Like yeah. once you have that hierarchy of God before everything else, mm-hmm. it just gives you a peace and like a bitachon, mm-hmm. which means trust in our, in, in Hebrew. Yeah. And, <laughs> um, it's so true. Mm-hmm. And you do seem like more peaceful. Oh yeah. Since I've, Absolutely. We had like a little chaotic energy in high school. We yeah. So we were out. silly. Yeah. <laughs> we were very silly. Yeah. Her dad called me trouble. Yeah. <laughs> definitely was. Name. Yeah. We were always getting together. Trouble. We were trouble. We <laughs> pulled it out of each other, but not anymore. Now we could talk about God and yes. it's so beautiful. Like it doesn't matter that we're different religions. Like I resonate with so many things that it's Allie says and she resonates with me and we get to like share the nuances of our religion with each other. And we don't so judge beautiful. each other because no. we see the beauty of it. Yeah. Like we really appreciate it. Mm-hmm. There's oh, there's so much beauty in it. Yeah. And it's just about living for something beyond yourself at yeah. the end of the day and having a higher purpose and realizing the truth. Like um, that there is like a God and like what we do matters. Yeah. Um, wow. So much to say about your story. Yeah. So what do you think has been the biggest change for you in terms of like your everyday lifestyle? Um, yeah, I would say like definitely just that sense of peace that he gave me. That's the biggest change. But how I structure my day, like I definitely include prayer. I used to pray to God occasionally, but now I feel like I'm always talking to him. Like even if I'm in the car or whatever, like it, he's always on my mind and just like how I can serve him. And yeah, wow. just how... I always pray for him to guide my next step. So, and for wisdom, of course, too. So, so I have a question about yeah. that. In Judaism, we mm-hmm. serve God by doing mitzvot, which mm-hmm. just means good deeds mm-hmm. or like points of connection. Mm-hmm. And we have 613 like outlined mitzvot like wow. that we have to serve him. And we, if, so, if we do a mitzvah, we know we're like serving him, right? Mm-hmm. So how do you serve him mm-hmm. in your faith? In, in Christianity, we say we serve God through worship, through song, definitely at the beginning of church, you serve him by showing up in church and connecting with other people, even by sharing your faith. That's another way. You also um, praise God with your finances. We believe that you give the first 10% of your income to God and his house. And that's been like a huge shift. Um, Because I think I used to have more of like a scarcity mindset, like, okay, let me take all the money for myself. But once you give it to God, then you only have to manage the remaining 90%. And the first 10 is already to the Lord, which is really beautiful. Um, I, it changed my entire finances, yeah. by the way. Like, yeah. it literally totally restructured how I, I used to have the most scarcity mindset. And ever yeah. since giving 10% away, you can have that trust that mm-hmm. because you put God first, God won't a- abandon you and your finances. Yeah. He won't let you down, yeah. right? Because you prioritize Him first. Yeah. It gives you so much more peace of mind. It's so ironic because you mm-hmm. would think if I'm giving the money to charity, right. I would have less. It's just the opposite. Just Absolutely. the opposite. Yeah, God wants us to be generous yeah. and he'll and change your life, right. you know, once you are and you're following in his ways. One thing that my church talks about is that um, the Israelites are God's chosen people. And I'm currently reading the Old Testament and I'm so excited to share that with Allie and just talk. Like I got to read about the first Passover, which was beautiful. And I didn't really know that story. Wow. And, you know, just to hear about coming out of Egypt, out of slavery and like back to Israel like, and like the strength and determination of your people is amazing and all made possible by God. And yeah. Wow. Yeah. So I definitely admire like your religion, your culture, like where you're from, like that is special and unique wow. and like should be cherished. When you read that story, like the Passover story, mm-hmm. what sticks out? Just God's presence with the Jewish people. It's crazy. Yeah. No? Yeah. So I'm just like, it's so funny to me because when you, Bailey, we were having dinner and Bailey was like saying how she believes like Jews are the chosen people. And I was thinking like, if you believe, pardon me if this is a stupid question, but if you believe Jews are the chosen people, like, why wouldn't other people, like, would you, do you feel bad about that? Like, mm-hmm. do you want to convert? Do right. you feel bad? Mm-hmm. Neither. I just, you know, <laughs> that's how it is. And that's, you know, I don't <laughs> mind, you know, it's okay <laughs> that Long Islanders aren't the Jewish or the chosen people, for example. Like, it makes sense that. It doesn't make you feel like bitter? Not at all. No. Why not? Or, like, jealous? Yeah, no, no, it's okay. Yeah. <laughs> like, why? Is that a stupid question? You know what I mean? Like, Yeah. 
Right, like because that's like not... if everybody wants a close relationship with mm-hmm. God, yeah, and God like chose a certain group of people, mm-hmm. then doesn't the other people who obviously have just as close a relationship with God, right, right, you have such a close connection with yeah. Him, but you're like not chosen by, or you right. like what do you make of all that? I'm right. not saying I any... think God chose um, the Jewish people just as His narrative. Like, of course, the Old oh. Testament is all about the Jewish people and their journey. And you could be, you, you could love God from ev- any country. It doesn't matter. Of but you, re- you read about the Jewish people, you know, in Israel and like coming out of Egypt, for example. So there's a reason why, you know, we're told to pray for Israel. And no matter what circumstances they go through, that's God's people and to continue praying for them. I love that. Like yeah. that's the narrative that God, yeah. Because I obviously do believe that Jews mm-hmm. are the chosen people, but it's not to say that like to invalidate right. other people. Yeah. Like, everyone you know is worthy. I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Everyone is worthy. Right. Exactly. And like, yeah. So you mentioned that a pivotal step in your journey was obviously like the terrible passing of your father. Mm-hmm. And he was so beloved in not only your family, like our whole community mm-hmm. growing up, Thank everybody you. knew Bailey's dad as like the guy on the block that everyone loves and come to Bailey's house. You'll always be welcomed. So he sweet. had the biggest smile. He welcomed everybody. Everyone was his friend. Everybody was like, welcome it's like family Mm -hmm. and how did that impact your walk sort of like in your religious journey yeah so I think like right after he passed I was so like in shock and in a low place in my life and what I found myself doing I wasn't even doing this intentionally but I was praying at the end of each night and I was praying for you know God's um, healing and God's hand on my life and then he got to show me my church which was only three blocks away from my house. And like, I didn't have this relationship with the church that I do now. It's been such a blessing Mm -hmm. and I found so much healing there and there's so many amazing things going on there. I can't even believe like how many people are being saved at that church. I was one of 600 people that gave their lives to God. What do you mean by that? So what does that mean? Every Sunday they give everyone attending the opportunity to make the decision to start loving God if they haven't made that publicly yet and then to make the bold decision to stand up in front of the church and just to make that public declaration that God is your God. So that just means standing in front of people at church on a Sunday and saying like I love God or what is that? It's more like okay if you want to give your life to Christ like you can now and just you know. And that means you go in front of the church and you like say it. You just stand up from your seat. But there was 600 people that did that in this past year, and I was one of them that made the decision for Christ. Yeah. Like, either the first time or the first time in a long time. Um, Wow. Yeah. And obviously, it's changed my life so much. You could only think about how many other lives it's changed. And I know, like, this Sunday, like, tomorrow, there's 85 people that are getting baptized, which is another, like, huge step in your journey in Christianity. So, like, they are just, you know, plundering hell, populating heaven one person at a time. So, I'm just so proud to be a part of that. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. Did that wow. answer your question? It started with, like, how did losing You're... my dad, like, yeah, kind no, of tie into that. Yeah. It did. But it just opened me up to this, like, beautiful community. And, you know, I get to think about, like, how he had this journey in his life at one point and how it was important, like, for him to teach us the Bible, even though like we weren't, we didn't go to church regularly, he still like planted those seeds in me, yes. which is so important. And yeah. He would be so proud of you. Oh, thank you. And I know you said um, before we started recording, like mm-hmm. how it's been a little bit difficult for you with navigating right. your like religion and your growth mm-hmm. with a family who's not necessarily growing in the same direction at the same pace mm-hmm. that is definitely tough it's something I deal with and I feel like a lot of the people listening and watching they'll also deal with because it is so common if mm-hmm. you've been if you have like one of the, a family who all did shuva like together that's such a blessing because it can be so difficult to like to not be on the same page with your family and feel misunderstood by your family and judged. Mm -hmm. So how has it been with your family? Yeah. I mean, they definitely support me, but they're not with me attending every single Sunday. Like this has been my own journey, like finding God. And it's just different for them because they haven't gone through this themselves yet. And neither have like some of my closest friends and 
when you're called to be a believer in God, like you're set apart and you're not following what the world wants you to follow. So there is risk involved in that. And you have to, you know, continue to put God first, even though it's hard. Do you think you've had to separate from a lot of friendships as you've found that, like, you've been on this journey by yourself, growing? That's a good question. I definitely look at the relationships I have more closely now. Mm -hmm. I luckily haven't had to cut anyone out. There's no one that's negative or toxic or rude, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, But hopefully I'm just viewing it like I could help bring them closer to God and like one day they'll have a relationship with Mm -hmm. him and like even though it's hard and it's the same thing like at my workplace I'm not surrounded by believers at the moment and God still called me to be in that environment to hopefully you know spread the good news and you know to talk about him with other people so even though someone's not doing that already doesn't mean I can't enter that space and do it myself but it is extremely difficult because this is something I've never had to navigate before yeah yeah what would you tell the other people who are, like, alone, right. becoming religious, Yeah, and they feel isolated by their family yeah. and outcasted? Yeah, just keep talking to God, keep praying on it. If your family, you know, is loving and support you, like, supports you, just keep with that relationship. You don't have to cut your family off just because they don't have the same beliefs as you do, unless it's, like, toxic or they're rude or something like that. And find people that have similar beliefs as you. And hopefully you can develop a community based off of that. 100%. If God chose you, it's for a reason mm-hmm. to be, to feel close to him. It's because you are that close to him. And it is inspirational. It's you shining your light into the world. And don't let anybody dim your light. Absolutely. And I think you're a really patient person, which is a very important quality to have oh, when you're dealing with you. other people's like religious growth or direction. Mm-hmm. To be patient with everybody and know that like anybody mm-hmm. could do teshuva mm-hmm. in the last day um, of their lives. Like it's never too late. Mm. Like don't judge where someone that you know that we don't right. see where someone that got. They could actually be um, way more connected than mm-hmm. even than you are or than you think you are. Right. So we really can't judge. In a past life, who knows if you know our parent that we're like, oh, why won't they just come around right what and who knows if they were in a past life a very 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 religious person and they only needed to do one mitzvah in this life to correct for their soul's correction you know yeah so i think it's really important that we talked about that yeah i'm really grateful that we were able to have you and i'm so happy you shared your journey with us absolutely thank you for having me and thank for you know talking about God with me it's so important and I love you and keep being bold oh yeah thanks yeah